Good morning. Welcome back to Planet Doug. I thought I'd start today's video here inside my room at the hotel. And a friend of mine, Jamie, is downstairs waiting for me right now. And the two of us are going on a 30-minute walk to a museum. It's a museum that Jamie discovered. I didn't even know it existed. And this museum is dedicated to the founding father of Malaysia. And I really don't want to get his name wrong, so I'm reading from notes here. I see him referred to as His Highness Tunku Abdul Rahman. Reading from Wikipedia, or a quote from Wikipedia, it says that he was commonly known simply as Tunku, a Malay royal title. Tunku Abdul Rahman is widely regarded, even by his critics, as Malaysia's founding father, the architect of Malayan independence and of the formation of Malaysia. As such, he is often referred to as father of independence, Bapa Kamerdekaan, or father of Malaysia, Bapa Malaysia. So there is a museum dedicated to him and his life. And at this point, other than a whole bunch of other notes that I cobbled together from the internet, that's pretty much all I know about him. And it does tend to get really complicated because even though Malaysia has a very celebrated Independence Day, its history and its independence is more of a process than a big revolutionary struggle, anything like that. So I'm going to leave it there for now. Go down, meet Jamie. We're going to go for a walk and we have to get over a bridge that goes across a river and a bunch of highways and uh, track this place down. And uh, yeah, go uh, check out the uh, museum for the father of Malaysia. You have to push the button to get out. Release the magnetic lock. Ah. And there he is, once again. Famous Jamie. Plotting our route to get there. Trying here. I noticed we have to get across a pedestrian bridge across the river and a bunch of highways. So he's. into the entrance for the Asia School of Business. I thought we'd have to turn around. Jamie said he thinks we have to go up this hill. And yeah, there's a sign right here. Uh, what is going on here? Yeah, this is the Tunku Abdul Rahman Putra Memorial. All three museums are on this sign. And one trick to this place is that it has different hours on Friday, as you can see. So it closes for Friday prayers. Every other day it's open from nine to five, but on Friday it closes from 12 to three. So you have to be aware of that. Otherwise you're waiting for three hours, Saturday and Sunday, nine to five. Mondays, tutup, closed.
So we're on the uh, inside now. The whole place is super well organized, tons of information on the outside. This is something they call Block A, and then it has several floors, first floor, second, third, and then when you come in, let's see if I can find uh, some light here. They, you can get one of these um, brochures and it opens up and, and get, tells you all about what's here, map of the whole complex, everything. And as you would expect, when you first come in, you get a uh, lot of information about Tunku himself and the role that he played in the independence struggle of uh, Malaysia. And what's interesting to me is this sentence right here, where Tunku strived to fight for the nation's independence through negotiation and not bloodshed. He struggled with the people to liberate the country regardless of his royal status and position. So it's interesting that he had a focus, a personal focus on doing this without uh, violence, doing it through negotiation. A couple of things that I think I know about Tunku is that he was one of 45 children on his father's side. His father was the Sultanate of Keda and he had several wives and he ended up with 45 children and uh, Tunku was one of them and I believe he went for formal education in Britain so he went to England and attended university there before returning to uh, Malaysia. And I suppose this is the key information right here. On February 20th, 1956, the date for the independence of the Federation of Malaya was announced by Tunku. There's so much going on here about the history of the independence of uh, Malaysia. There's just no way to talk about all of it. There are so many displays, as you can see, so much information on the walls. But here's a very important one right here. This is a photograph that was taken at the signing of the independence agreement. So this fellow here in the middle, he, I just looked for his name, Sir Donald McGillivray, Mag and he represented the uh, British government at this ceremony. And then here it describes who was here. So this was on August 5th, 1957, a simple ceremony in full traditional clothing, I assume, or in full tradition for the signing of the Federation of Malaya Agreement was held at the King's House, Kuala Lumpur, and the signing ceremony was participated by all the Malay rulers and Sir Donald McGillivray. This is something interesting I didn't realize until just now, but this moment here, the signing of the independence agreement, they signed the agreement on August 5th, 1957, but the actual date when independence would come into effect was actually August 31st. So they signed the agreement here, and then if you go through the museum, of course, around the corner, they have a display about the actual moment when independence was declared. And of course, this is the big moment that everybody knows about when the flag was raised Sharp at 12 midnight before the dawn of August 31st, 1957. And a very important event was unfolded and recorded in the nation's history. So this is when, this is the second, the very first second of August 31st, just after midnight. That's when independence officially came into effect. And then the agreement over there was actually signed on August 5th and then it came into effect August 31st. And that was for the uh, Federation of Malaya, as a free, independent, and sovereign nation with its own identity. So this was basically at midnight, the big ceremony at Merdeka Square, and they raised the flag, the whole story that everyone knows. But then later in the day, and this is what I found interesting, there was another ceremony the actual proclamation of independence. So over there was the signing of the agreement, then the flag raising ceremony to mark the official second 
that independence was declared. And now we have a big ceremony, the proclamation of independence to the people. And that took place at Merdeka Stadium at 9.30 in the morning. 20,000 people attended, all the Malay rulers, as well as representatives from 30 Commonwealth countries. And Tunku read the plot proclamation of independence, and it says here that he then shouted Merdeka seven times. Members of the Federation Navy hoisted the flag, and 101 cannon shots were released by the uh, Federation Navy. And then you move along the history here, and then you get to the formation of the new government cabinet, which also took place in 1957. We've moved up to the second floor, and there are bathrooms up here. And this is the gallery here. Seems to have a lot of portraits of Tunku's family. This would be his uh, grandmother. If I under, there's a, a letter here written by Tunku himself. And I believe he's saying that this is his grandmother. And I think there are a lot of uh, family members here. It's quite a bit darker up here in this exhibit, but that's okay. They have uh, large windows here with displays. And they seem to be talking a lot about his personal life, Tunku's personal life, his family, his hobbies, his activities, sports, things like that. So here, for example, I've noticed that he seems to be quite interested in shooting video, or not video, I guess, film in those days. He's got a film camera. You can see it down there below, which is quite interesting binoculars, little radio, and uh, turntable, Polaroid camera, binoculars, and uh, so we see the life of Tunku here. But more about his life, sporting, tennis, golf, swimming, again taking uh, photographs and film. There's another one of his cameras, it's quite interesting. Does it say what kind of camera it is? Tunku's camera collection, they call it. Big flash down there. That's a more modern uh, piece of gear. These are nice. That's a very, uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Sort of a 1950s or 60s, a vintage feeling to them. These display cases, I like those. And this is new information for me as well. This, I, I didn't know anything about his family or his wife, but this is his wife here, Tun Sharifa Rodzia, his wife and uh, family photographs. And something else I didn't realize is they uh, adopted two children. Jamie's sharp eyes picked out this photograph here, a family portrait of Tunku and Sharifa Rodzia with two adopted children, Suleiman and Mariamam. Right there. And the display up here on the second floor ends with the, uh, the date that the Tunku passed away. So there's a newspaper article here from the, uh, the Straits Times. The Tunku is dead. I guess he passed away on December 6, 1990, he was uh, 87 years old. He was born in uh, 1903, lived until 1990, a nice, nice long uh, life. So that's the exit from the auditorium, well, the life story of the Tunku, and I believe there's another floor there's a very elaborate staircase heading up to there. So onward to the next floor, but I don't, I don't know what's up there. Very elaborate. Whoa. Ay, ay, ay. More about the journey towards independence. Look at that.
So far, this upper floor, the, I think this is the top floor. You can see it all around me here. It's essentially retelling the story of Malaysia's independence, the same history that uh, we are reading about in the other exhibits, but it goes into it here in much greater detail. And it also has a lot more information about the Tunku and his life. So for example, there's a uh, central thing here. Tunku and the star. I don't really know what the relationship is at this point, but apparently he's connected with this, uh, the people's paper, the star. Maybe I can read this and it'll tell me why, what he had to do with it. Maybe he founded the newspaper. I'm gonna read that for a minute and then I'll let you know what I learned. Okay, I think I have some of the details. This is a bit of the uh, history here of the star. And it says that the star was a small newspaper from Penang and then Tunku took an interest in it, but this was after he left politics. He was not in the government anymore. And apparently there's another sign in there that talks about how the he purchased shares in the company to help it continue. It, it needed money and then he bought into the company. So he became chairman of the star. And then because of that, he started writing. And I guess he wrote a weekly column for the newspaper and he kept writing for a very long time. And then all of his articles and the common and the, the columns that he wrote eventually were all pulled together into different collections and were published as books. So this whole exhibit is about him and the star and his, his career as a writer, basically, after he uh, left politics. Yeah, quite an interesting story. It's also something I didn't know about him at all. As you can see, there's a lot of information. Remembering Tunku. He certainly seems to be skilled in English. A lot of this he wrote himself. I was reading this, for example, and I noticed it was just like written from a first person point of view, or I, 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 and I realized he wrote this whole thing, and it's all very well written. So, right there is his career from 77 to 87. His articles were republished in eight volumes, and there's a, a list of all the books that he uh, published kind of memoirs of the of his life and the history of uh, Malaysia interesting we found a door that opened out onto the uh, outdoor uh, ga outdoor uh, veranda very cool I was just chatting with Jamie about this land how expensive it could be it's a beautiful part of KL I'll turn the camera around and show you so this is the museum the memorial to uh, Tunku right there and look at that view and I'm not sure what this is yet over here this could be a memorial one of the other memorials and the building behind me has a sign on it that says residence but I, I don't think anybody actually lives there I'm not sure what the what that building is all about but yeah look at this and uh, the botanical gardens, I think, are off in that direction somewhere. A lot of jungly areas around here. Very nice. This is quite interesting. This is a display of the actual proclamation of independence. I've never seen it before. So I've never seen the wording of it and exactly what it says. It's quite interesting to read through this thing. I assume people can find it online if they want to read it for themselves. I just read through most of it. Yeah, it's quite interesting. And uh, situated right here beside the uh, Tunku Memorial. So maybe this will tell us what this building is. Calls it a residency. We'll find out who lived here. I just read through most of this and I'm not sure that I have all the facts straight in my head, but apparently this building was the home of the British residence. So here, the residency is historical as it was the official residence of first British resident, the first chief minister of Malaya and the first prime minister of Malaysia. So as it says here, the Tunku 
made the residence to his official home. So he, li he lived here. So I'm slowly getting the lay of the land. This is the residency. It was the official home of the Tunku. The memorial to the Tunku was just on the other side of it. There's that huge tree that I was talking about. And it turns out that this big white building here is the other memorial, the Memorial Tun Hussein On. So that's the second one. And then there is a third down there, the Memorial Negarawan, Negarawan. So Jamie and I have ducked into this other building and it is much more expansive and grand than I realized. It's the Memorial Tun Hussein On. And then there's a photo, an aerial photograph of the building, the uh, engineering and architecture. It's incredible. Another shot of the building there. So whatever the exhibits are like inside, the building itself is quite something. It looks like we're able to walk all the way to the top and there's like a, almost like a garden area up there. It looks almost like a golf course. Wow. Just looking around, it feels newer, much more modern than the uh, Tunku Memorial. Yeah, it was built in 1994, I think, if I remember what it said down below. And then his official vehicle, yeah, it's more, more modern. Mercedes-Benz 380 SEL. So as it says, it's the official car used by Tun Hussein On when he was the Prime Minister of Malaysia in 1976 until 1981. Jungle Squad, formed in 1948, specially created to fight the communists. Oh, as one of its leaders, there you go, Tun Hussein On played a key role in the squad's formation, but also commanded the squad. And since the light is on this guy right here, I'm assuming that's him. He's the only one that gets a uh, spotlight. Third from left front row. Third from left front row. Oh, so <laughs> I guess the, the spotlight was just an accident. It appears that this is him down here. Hmm. There's an official biography. He was the third prime minister of Malaysia born 1922 in Johor Bahru. Very honest appraisal down here at the bottom. He was an average student, yet he would forever be cherished as one who would have, who loves to joke around. Quiet and reserved student. He loved to read and would spend hours walking from a bookstore to another searching for books. He would be reading every night before he went to bed. We don't have enough time to do a deep dive into everything here and learn everything, but just overall getting a very interesting impression of who this man was. He's led, appears to have led quite an interesting life. So just to, to quickly review some of these exhibits, this is of him conferring with some British military officials for reoccupying Malaya from the Japanese. So he was involved in that. A lot of military experience. There's a, a summary here. When he completed his military training, he went to uh, India and he was involved in training Malayan police recruits. And he had joined the assault team of the 2nd Battalion, which sailed to Madras in August 1945. However, when he was on the way to Rangoon, Myanmar, the Japanese army surrendered due to the bombing of Hiroshima. And this display focuses on his philosophy and beliefs as a leader. I guess he was known as Bapa Perbata Perbaduan, the father of unity. And it says that throughout his tenancy as the prime minister, Tun Hussein On would always endorse harmony 
in living as a multiracial society. So that was a focus of him to keep all the different racial components of Malaysian society together. And on this side, it talks about his belief, I think, in uh, self-sacrifice. says here that uh, the phrase, your own ease, comfort, and safety come last, always and every time. And he took that philosophy from his time in the military. So yeah, we, we run out of time for all of the memorials, so we're not going to make it to this one over here. This is the Memorial Nagarawan. They're going to close at noon, so we're not going to be able to get in to see that one. And this is the one I just came out of, the Memorial Tun Hussein On. Really nice, really nicely put together, beautiful inside, spacious, comfortable, and a very interesting and um, focused look at the life of this man, who he was and what he meant to Malaysia. I enjoyed that quite a bit. It was very nice. So, yeah, there are some rooftops here and verandas and a stairway going to the top of this building. So, I'm going to a head up here. Hopefully get a nice view of the area. Oh, huh. interesting. Almost reached the very top. Just a couple more feet in altitude, really, to get up here. I think that is the absolute top. But from here, you get a nice view overlooking everything. So there's the residency right there. And right beside it is the Tun Tun Tunku, Tunku Memorial. And I'm still confused about the buildings, though, because based on what we read, the residency was here first, and then they built the memorial beside it, and, but they look so exactly similar in style, it almost feels like they were all constructed at the same time, but I, I don't really know. Oh, look at that view of uh, Kuala Lumpur. I was wondering where they were, and there they are, Petronas Towers. Always helps me get oriented when I spot them. And of course, the uh, Merdeka 118 building over there. And uh, just peeking out between these two buildings, there's the uh, KL Tower. We've worked our way down to the main courtyard right in front of everything. Very nice view of the whole area. Very interesting. So this is where I'm standing right now. And that's the uh, Tunku Memorial, the residency. And then that cement, the white cement wall there is the uh, Tun Hussein On Memorial. They're symmetrical, aren't they? This one over here on one side. And then this one here, yeah, they're two symmetrical buildings with uh, the residency as the uh, point of the triangle, basically. Gotta love symmetry. And here is Tunku, probably the moment that he was shouting Merdeka at the uh, proclamation of independence at Merdeka Square. And this is probably a, oh, a summary of his life, yeah, 1903 is when he was born and the, the path of his life. Wow. I was just thinking that if you take this and then the memorial to Tun Hussein On, they are very, uh, very nice to their prime ministers. I was just wondering whether any prime minister from Canada would get this kind of treatment. I don't think you're going to find a memorial like this 
to any prime minister from Canada. So it's really quite something that they have these. So that is it. Leaving from the memorial and heading back into the city. Probably going to track down cold coffee or something like that. So I hope you enjoyed that. One of the hidden gems of Kuala Lumpur. Highly recommended. Planet Doug approved. Free of charge, by the way. And you saw the opening hours in the video at the beginning so you know when you can come here. It's a very easy walk to get here. So uh, yeah, very, very enjoyable. One last look around where I am at this uh, amazing place. And with that, I'll shut down the video and I will see you in the next one.